So let's look into Workday and let's take a look at some of the standard reports that we have in Workday. The first one we will see is the base pay report. Okay, the base pay report. Now let's run this report and it asks you for the manager. Okay, let's say Steve Morgan. So Steve is the manager and if I click on OK, it gives you the list of the reportees for Steve Morgan. Okay, so how many reportees does Steve have? Steve has 12 reportees, right? 12 direct reportees in this particular system. And we have people like Ethan, Mark, Evelyn Smith, and so on. All of these looks to be some training and some sample data. You see, the base pay for these workers are typically, I mean, for all of the cases, it's zero for one worker. Ethan Mark, it is $395,000, right? So this is about these workers. Now you see that this report has the output as rows and columns of data correct. But it also has a chart associated with it. Okay, just like our pivot table and pivot charts in Excel. And here, if you notice closely, you see each of these values that we have, like the employee, the position, the manager, all of them are links right. So I can straight away take some action on these workers. Isn't it? That is what I meant when I said that the users can take actions from the report output itself. You don't have to look at this report, put it in Excel, and then navigate to this worker, and then do something. No, not needed. Straight away from this report. Output from this Workday UI screen. You can take some actions. Correct. So this is the power of the Workday reports, okay. So now, if I want to change the search criteria, and I want to do for somebody else, let's say I want to search it for Jack Taylor. Let's see if I can find Jack. No, I cannot. Anthony Rizzo. No, so let's look for Logan. Let's see wherever Logan is a manager. So Logan McNeil. And let's see how many people Logan manages. Directly or indirectly. So there are 325 people who are managed by Logan. And you see that? Okay, Herman Butler and his salary is given. We have Kelly Ross. Their salary is also given. And this chart. Can anyone tell me is there an order or a sequence in the way this chart is given? Or the values are organized. Decreasing order. Correct. So it looks like, yeah, even in the chart. You see, it is much more clear here. It is like decreasing order in terms of the annualized salary. So in a report output, we can do those kinds of sorting as well, right? So this is our standard report. This is a standard report. The base pay is a standard report, but do you think that it can be improved? Or is it missing some information? Wouldn't it be better if we have things like, let's say, the higher date or maybe the location, etc., as part of this, isn't it? So maybe we can take this report. And I mean it is already in a good situation. Like, it has a lot of interesting information 
but maybe we can take it from here and we can add something to it to better suit our purposes. So we will do just that. But let me show you some more standard reports so that you are able to appreciate the power of Workday. So now let me show you another one, which is Headcount Trend. Five-year headcount trend. I think that's what it's called. Okay. I think it's five hyphen years, five hyphen year. Yeah, five-year headcount trend right. Look at this particular report. So let's search for it first. If we search for it, sometimes it doesn't run automatically, especially in this particular tenant. We run it again. Okay, what is the problem? Okay, alright, no problem. Let me open the report definition. Alright. So who is? Is it shared with me? Do not share who is the owner. Okay, so this is a custom report anyway. Let me run this. Anyway, let me run this report. Okay, not running organization, top level, selected. Okay, somebody did something funny with this. Anyway, let's not bother too much about this, let's look at another one. Find workers right. Find workers. Let's look at this report. Now does this report look similar to what we saw before? What does this look like? You have certain employees on your right right. And on the left, you have some filter criteria. So what does this resemble? I mean the way this is presented. Where do we see this type of presentation? Where do you have a list on your right? And on the left, you have some filter criteria. Online shopping right. Yes, where you create your shopping carts, write online shopping. And then, based on these filters, what can you do? You can narrow it down right. You can select those criteria on the left and then it will return only the filters, only the values which match those filters. Correct. So let's say, I choose for the workers 21 to 30. I choose this age group. The moment I do that automatically, it brings it down to the six workers who match that particular criteria right. And then let's say, I want to compare the two workers, or maybe not this, let's do something else. Let's look at. Let's say in. Let's say I'm trying to think something. Let's say in compensation grade, let's say management right. Management compensation grade. Let's look at a few workers. Okay. And let's say these two workers. I want to compare. Oh, there are quite a lot of workers. Let's say I want to compare Lloyd Richardson and Jonathan Kelly. Okay, I want to compare these two workers. So you can do that. Click on Compare. And the moment you do it, it gives you those two workers side by side. It gives you these two workers side by side. Isn't it easy to compare now, right? So now you are looking at this and you see that, okay, the base pay for Jonathan Kelly is in Munich in Germany. It's 69,000 euros. 
and Lloyd Richardson is in Chicago. He is $121,440. Now you see that in the grade it says below segment 1, and this is segment 2. So what does this tell you about the way these two people are paid? Below segment 1 and S2 Remember when we did compensation, we had the paid in segments 1, 2, 3, 4. There can be 3, 4, or 5 paid in segments. And what information does that give us? A grade gives you the paid age correct. Now, what does the segment tell you? Can we have two segments? We can have only three, four, and five segments. What does it mean if it says S2 or maybe below segment 1? What were those paid age segments? It divided the entire paid age into some smaller parts. So we call those parts as segments, correct? So what information does it give you? If I tell you that, okay, somebody is in S2, what does that mean? So okay, let me give you an example. Let's say there are four segments. I call it S1, S2, S3, and S4. S1 being the lowest, S4 being the highest. Okay. So now tell me, what is S2? Less than average, so the average is a midpoint. If this person is S2, that means S1, S2, S3, and S4, there are four segments. So now we are comparing. So if I have two workers, one is below segment. 1, 1 is S, 2. Now, what do you understand by this? Below segment 1 means what? Is this? Compensation is even below the paid age right. Is below segment 1 is even below the segment 1, starting level. And what about S2? So this amount comes within the S2 segment. That is still below the midpoint, because S3 and S4 will be above the midpoint right. So just by looking at this, I can tell that, okay, this guy is underpaid. This? Lloyd Richardson is underpaid. And what about Jonathan Kelly? Is he underpaid or overpaid? Yeah, grossly or strictly underpaid. So Jonathan Kelly might be very unhappy. So we have to take care of him. Anyway. So these two, I mean. Just by looking at this, we can tell whether he's underpaid or overpaid. We have the amount. We have the amount, 69,000 dollar euros, but how do we understand if the 69,000 euros is good or bad? So you look at the paid segment and then you can decide, okay, how does this compare in terms of his peers or other people in this particular compensation grade? 